Rocket Lab just shocked SpaceX and Elon Musk. Welcome to Techverse, SpaceX Starship. The president of Rocket Lab explains why Elon Musk's plan has a deficiency. Peter Beck, the founder and CEO of Rocket Lab, has expressed concern that SpaceX's Starship will not be suitable for all of the uses for which it is planned. The Starship of SpaceX may be capable of a great deal, but it will not be able to complete all of its objectives. The company's underdevelopment rocket, which was first revealed in 2017, is meant to deliver humans to Mars and other planets in the solar system. The company's CEO, Elon Musk, indicated at the time of its introduction that he wished to create a single booster and ship that will replace the existing Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon rockets, a spaceship that is also capable of launching satellite constellations, such as the Starlink constellation, is what we are talking about here. The CEO of Rocket Lab, Peter Beck, stated in an interview with Inverse that this concept may be a step too far in terms of feasibility for the company. The Starship will not be engaged in the building of future satellite constellations, according to Beck, who was speaking following the company's most recent updates on its Neutron rocket project. To paraphrase him, if you want to colonize the planet Mars, the Starship is the vehicle for you to do so. It is not possible to launch a succession of constellations in spacecraft into low Earth orbit with a 100-ton payload if you want to support your efforts with a multitude of spacecraft. The comments cast doubt on an aspect of the Starship that had previously received a lot of praise. When compared to the Falcon 9, which can launch around 16 tons into low Earth orbit and be reused, the Starship can launch more than 100 tons. Beyond Musk's comments during the Starship's unveiling, the billionaire has stated that he expects to use it to launch satellites in the next weeks and months. His announcement that Starlink missions would be transferred to Starship was made on Twitter in June of 2021. Now that Falcon 9 rockets can launch up to 60 Starlink satellites at the same time, it is possible that the launch capacity of the space station will be significantly increased. Despite this, Starlink isn't the only mega constellation on the horizon. There are several others using hundreds of satellites in low Earth orbit. Amazon's Project Kuiper and its competitor Telesec both hope to deliver internet access to millions of people around the world. Rocket Lab completed construction of the Neutron rocket, which will make its first flight in 2024 and be capable of delivering payloads weighing up to 8 tons. Beck argues that a smaller capacity rocket is ideal for constellation development because it can transport payloads to a greater number of orbital planes at once. According to Beck's observations, if you wish to arrange the constellation on a single orbital plane, it is fine, but it is not particularly useful. As a general rule, having a large number of planes is more beneficial. Besides that, Beck argues that using a smaller rocket to handle a lesser payload is more cost-effective for manufacturers, since it is more cost-effective for them to utilize a smaller rocket. For example, you don't get a discount for loading 8 tons of rock into a 100-ton rocket, he explains. The price of the rocket has remained unchanged. Rocket Lab, according to Beck, will be able to lift around 90% of the total weight of all scheduled missions over the next decade when used in conjunction with the Electron launch vehicle. The Starship and other heavy lift boats are still available for missions, as are other heavy lift vessels. Then there's the possibility of a rocket that can take the place of the Falcon 9. All of this is contingent on SpaceX's ability to deliver reasonably priced launch services in the future. Musk predicts that the ship will only cost $2 million per launch, which is a considerable savings compared to the Falcon 9's $62 million cost per launch. Increasing competition is being seen in the attempt to make space more accessible than it has ever been. In an interview on the firm's website, Rocket Lab USA CEO Peter Beck stated that his company and Elon Musk's SpaceX share some similarities. He, on the other hand, aims to take a different route in order to expand his company over the following few years. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, Rocket Lab, ticker RKLB, announced that it had completed its merger with the special purpose acquisition business vector acquisition, effectively transforming the company into a publicly traded corporation. But perhaps more importantly, Rocket Lab has increased its cash on hand from $777 million to $777 million, 
since the company's stock symbol was changed from VACQ to RKLB. In the meantime, around half of the money had been placed in a Vector Acquisition Trust account, which had been set up specifically for whatever firm the SBAC ultimately decided to take public. In addition, so-called private investments in public equity, in which firms like as Boeing purchased holdings at Rocket Lab, contributed the other half of the funding. In the first instance, the funds will be used to aid the company in the development of its neutron launch vehicle. The Falcon 9 rocket from SpaceX is a larger rocket that can compete with this one in terms of performance. Developed by Rocket Lab, the Neutron is the second vehicle in the company's history. The Electron, the company's first operational, reusable rocket, has been used to launch more than 100 satellites into low Earth orbit, a total of more than 100 satellites. According to Beck, who spoke to Barron's, we are the second most often launched rocket in the United States. The Falcon family of SpaceX rockets are the most frequently launched rockets in the United States, with over 100 launches per year. When it comes to the success of their launch services businesses, there is a lot of room for comparison between Rocket Lab and SpaceX. Another advantage is that you have more than just rockets at your disposal. According to Beck, we are a space systems firm that provides end-to-end -end solutions. SpaceX and Rocket Lab are both companies that are capable of creating and launching their own satellites and space vehicles. As reported by NASA, the next phase of its escapade interplanetary mission has been approved, which will see the final design and construction of two spacecrafts named Photons, which will be built by Rocket Lab and launched into orbit around the Sun. Those are the ones who will eventually journey to Mars, according to the theory. Beck's company can reasonably be described to as a miniature version of the SpaceX Corporation. It is really vital to have the minivan. SpaceX is currently valued at 74 billion US dollars on the private market. Rocket Lab has a market capitalization of around 5 billion dollars at the time of writing. A large chunk of the value of SpaceX is tied to the company's forthcoming space-based high-speed internet service, known as Starlink. Starlink is expected to be operational by the end of 2018. SpaceX is currently constructing a constellation of hundreds of satellites that will be capable of connecting people to the internet in the future. According to Musk, the company has already deployed 100,000 terminals to Starlink members all around the world, and the number is growing. For SpaceX, the internet business is a crucial bet to make at the present time. In the words of Beck, SpaceX has pushed all of the chips into internet broadband, a good use of resources. It is never in our nature to take the chance of putting everything on a line. When it comes to investing, he prefers to use a portfolio method. Between the two companies, there is a major difference in this regard. Despite the fact that the internet is a widely used application, Beck observes that it appears as if a new broadband satellite constellation is unveiled every week on the horizon. It is projected to be a very competitive market in the future. In his conclusion, Beck stated, I believe that the largest TAM in space has yet to be completed. Beck was referring to the total addressable market TAM. The space sector is still in its early stages, so predicting the next great thing will be hard. Thus, Beck wants to leave all of his choices open in order to maximize his chances of success. Beck is ecstatic at the prospect of making the most of whatever happens in the future. According to Vim, if you have your own rocket and satellite, you are in a highly advantageous position. During the company's first trading day, under its new ticker symbol, the stock of Rocket Labs sank by 9.9% on Wednesday. During the same time period, the S&P 500 index increased by 0.2%, while the Dow Jones Industrial Average increased by 0.1%. During the period leading up to the completion of a SBAC merger, the stock prices of the companies involved could be quite volatile. After the close of trading on Wednesday, the stock of Rocket Lab had risen by around 5%, indicating that shareholders of the SPAC had approved the merger only a few days earlier. Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe for more.